I just wonder, as a kid, were you particularly into cartoons or animation, movies? Uh, particularly? I think I was into all those yeah. things, but particularly I think it was uh, mostly plays then when I was a kid. Really? And how did you even get exposed? Um, I was an usher. Really? Yeah. At what point did you realize you were also a, a talented writer? Because I, I've heard these legendary uh, stories about getting terrific interviews for your high school new, newspaper, things like that. So it seems like it must have been at a young age. No, no, it wasn't. It was not, um, it, it didn't have any reality until, it's embarrassing to tell you how recently. Really? Yeah, yeah. Even if you didn't believe it, were no, others telling you? No. Really? No, no. I mean, no, it was impossible. I mean, no, it was, life, life doesn't turn out that way. It, I, I always loved writing, but never considered that I could do it professionally. professionally. So how did it, <laughs> how did it work out then that you ended up doing it professionally to begin with at the beginning? Um, I always wrote. Um, I was lucky enough to get a job um, at CBS, though not a college graduate and certainly not an Ivy graduate that usually went to Ivy graduates as sort of like, you know, a, a, a stepping stone job. I, I was an usher there as well and then I was a copy boy and all these through fortunate breaks and um, and that led to me becoming a news writer. So I was doing some writing professionally and that led to documentaries and in each case you know and then that finally led to being out of work and trying a spec script for television. It doesn't seem like there was a ton of time between when you first started and when you had this first uh, hit, Mary Tyler Moore. Uh, gee I don't I don't know that there was a hunk of time yeah. if not a ton and uh, it's you know television is a very friendly and environment and certainly a writer's environment and uh, and I guess I, I guess actually I'd, I'd been doing it for I guess I was freelance writing for two or three years and I got to do a pilot and that pilot went on the air it was room 222 mm -hmm. and things followed after that and and is it fair to say that the first one that really hit was Mary Tyler Moore show oh, well it depends what you mean by really I, <laughs> In I, your I, I, I mean uh, the, the really started with selling a script, you know, yeah. I really sold a script was a pretty big deal. So they were, they were all very big deals to me. Right. You did something that I guess is not terribly common, which is that after achieving then great success in film, you came back to TV. And I just wonder how that ended up happening. A lot of people sort of look down at, or look at film as the more uh, ultimate destination rather than TV. I don't think that's true anymore. Okay. It was very much true. It was very much true when I was in TV. There was an. Uh, not only was it true, there was a tremendous prejudice against hiring anybody connected with TV for a movie. It was, you know, that that was, that was the environment then. There were even on different sides of the lot, different executives. People didn't mix it. It was considered a lower form, and even though we were having more fun. And, 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 and it was very much where the, you know, we, the, the cliche was the inmates running the asylum and, and in terms of writers running shows, it was that way. Um, work with great actors in television. Um, and, then, and then I think um, there, I, there are very few people who made it over the wall first. I think Ron Howard did and, and, um, and, um, and you know, then it was a trickle and then it, then, then it was non-existent. And now we've reached the point where, you know, I guess I was going to say all, but it's, if not all, virtually all first-rate dramas in television. And, and, and for a while, movies didn't do comedy, it's hard to believe. So all comedy was in television. And now, now it's, it's cross-pollinated like crazy. But if you were to go back to, I guess, it would be right after maybe broadcast news, and that time where you were pondering what the next step was, was it a conscious thing about, a conscious thought, let's do some more television? There's or? such different forms. I mean, you know, television is communal, more fun, uh, less on the line. When, when, once you're doing, and if you're doing a series, once it works, you're left to yourself. You, you just get to do it. You know, you have to do it. You get to do it. And, um, and it's, and I, I you know, I, I always think a successful television series is the best job you know, on a lot of things, it, because it gives you community, it doesn't demand temporary insanity the way movies do, you can be almost a normal person. When you and Matt Groening first crossed paths, can you share that story of how you were first even aware of him? Um, I, came, I came to 20th Century Fox mm -hmm. to do movies, and then they started a network, and they asked me to 
do a show as part of their starting what became the Fox Network. And this was a time when, when 20th Century Fox was in shaky financial trouble, when the, the network took a while. As a matter of, I, I think they were sort of on the verge of going under several times. And in that environment, somebody made me aware of Tracy Ullman, and we did a sort of loose, crazy, nobody was watching it, um, with this wildly talented woman on television. And we thought that, you know, these bumpers you have before you go to commercial, that we'd make them little entertainment pieces. And we'd do these 30-second animated pieces. And uh, I knew of Matt Groening's Life in Hell, and I asked him to come in and do one, not to, and, you know, and it was just for the network nobody ever heard of, for this <laughs> thing that very few people would watch. And, um, and he came in and sat in the building we're in now, and in the outer office, as a bolt from God, sort of drew what became of The Simpsons. Wow. And, and I think it's just noteworthy that through Terms of Endearment that you first, he first crossed your radar anyway, is that right? Yeah, um, yeah somebody had given me, after, after, um, after I did Terms of Endearment, which was the first movie I directed, um, a, a panel of Matt Groening's, so the original art, uh, of, a, of, of a life in hell that he had done, The Twelve Ways to Die, die in Los Angeles. And it was, it was great. It was, you know, drive-bys, you know, freeway shootings, uh, and the last two were six, You Can Die of Failure and Success. <laughs> and I had that hanging up. I still have it. Right. Faded, you can barely see what's there, and I still have it. And then Sam Simon, uh, who I had worked with on Taxi, and we had worked together on regular, you know, traditional half-hour shows, uh, that, that we really enjoyed. So then the three of us sat down and tried to figure out how to do The Simpsons as a series. So life as hell was not an option, though, for uh, the begin for that short... No, no. Matt, Matt wanted to protect that, and his protection against that was to draw, draw something hurriedly <laughs> in the outer office, which was pretty close to what The Simpsons looked like. Wow. And for someone who's been living under a rock for the last 26 years, what is The Simpsons about who are the Simpsons and what is this series about? <laughs> um, I can't do it. Uh, but I, I'll tell you this, they're, they're, the, they're the most user-friendly characters to have to work with from a writing point of view and uh, from an animator's point of view, I think, as well. And you can do whatever comedy you want with them. You can do an emotional comedy. You can do you can do satire. You can do parody. You can do you can be broad. You can be emotional. You can do a romantic comedy. They will travel with you. So anything that goes wrong is your fault, not theirs. <laughs> what even inspired the desire to make a feature and now to make a short? We resisted a feature for a long time. For a long time, we we and and then the resistance ended and we did it. And um, the, our own resistance to, to it, did, and we did it. But the short was just like people getting together to play jazz or something. It was, let's do it, let's do it in the simplest way possible. Uh, we, we, from, from the moment of saying let's do it to having the outline for what we do was shockingly fast. We, you know, sort of notions of what we're gonna try to do happened very quickly. And it was as close to pure fun, you know, it's almost criminal to say that, but, but it was so, it was, so it was refreshing. It was great for us. I mean, we all enjoyed it. And, and the only thing I can compare it to, though I don't play anything, is if five guys who play instruments got wow. together in a room. So for both the feature and the short, you entrusted the direction to David Silverman, and I wonder I if you can... I entrust children to him. I didn't trust <laughs> anything to David Silverman. Um, he was the one who I think is as responsible for The Simpsons being a series as anyone because he accosted me drunk on a Christmas party, office Christmas party long ago, and, and just spilled out passionately how there hadn't been an animated series on television for a quarter century at that time and how much it would mean to animators to have a series out there with animation. And I was really impressed. And that I think that moment led to doing the series as much as anything. Wow. What gave you the reason to believe that it was actually doable when it hadn't been done for so long? Well, first of all, we had the shorts, the magical shorts that Matt did on our television show. And then, and then when we did it, we decided to do it at the time. It changed a lot since then with very rigid rules of believability. And, uh, 
and all the rules that we had followed in, you know, like I said, Sam and I had worked on, uh, I think, several uh, situation comedies before, mm -hmm. character comedies primarily, the way we did it. And, and we decided to hold the same rules, the same believability rules. And, and what the life of The Simpsons has been like, and I think what's helped us so much, is every once in a while we'll throw a rule overboard and we'll no longer have that rule. If anybody said we're going to put the Simpsons in space and have creatures from space, I mean, we, we would have, you know, we would have tarred and feathered them. <laughs> in what ways has the show most markedly changed since the beginning? Uh, at the beginning, Bart was the overriding star. His behavior had never been seen before. He was, he was, he was front and center and shows revolved around him. And that's changed, you know, I think it's, it's Homer, uh, more than anybody else now. Wow. And is it particularly challenging? I mean, a lot of live action shows choose the advantage of a live audience or a laugh track. You guys have to be genuinely funny. You know, we have a, we have a table read um, for every show. And the table read has, you know, the large group that does the show. But also we have visitors, uh, maybe as many as 50 or 60 of them sitting around this large table. So, so we, 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 we have the test of whether people laugh or not. Right. The animation, it seems to have also evolved. Yeah. How would you say that's happened? Um, you know, I don't know because at a certain point when you have an experience like this, which none of us had ever had before The Simpsons, there hasn't, you know, if there was one, um, you end up, instead of, instead of running it or controlling it, you end up serving it. And it's like it has a life of its own. And that can happen when you're working on a script, too, where, you know, that's what people talk about, the characters dictating to me. It's, it's that phenomenon of the thing. Instead of you pushing, it's pulling. And it's the boss. The thing is the boss, not you anymore. And that's happened to us. And is that a, is that a satisfying thing? Is that yeah, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's uh, you know, service is always a decent and properly humble way to exist. Right. <laughs> was that feature six years ago a positive experience or was it something that you felt you kind of had to do? Let's see. Well, it was a, ultimately, it was a very positive experience, but, but we were so, it took us, it took us, I think, a year and a half of sitting at the table to just lose our white knuckles over it. To, oh, what if we screw it up? What if we screw up the whole franchise and everything like that? And, and, and you know, just doing the show and doing this show requires a certain looseness so that you can't be so tense over it. You've got to just, you know, the job is always to seem like you don't give a crap, that it, you're just ripping. You know, that you're having fun. And it took us a long time to get there because we cared so much. And, and the, the degree to which we cared was gotten away for a long time. But once, the, once we got over that hump, it was, it was a fantastic experience. So why, when things are going so well, push it again now, a new sort of challenge with 3D? It could have gone wrong. Well, we, we, had, this, we had this thing which we had to go through because of um, cost primarily. Where we, where we, everybody connected with the show had to agree to, you know, help reduce cost. It was fairly dramatically. It was just the reality. It was, pro it was right. It was, it was, you know, when you're on the air for a long time, and, uh, and, so we did that, and and they picked us up for another two years, which we wanted, and we we wanted very much to continue, and we, you know, I think. I think it was Al Jean, who's uh, been with us from the beginning and is the showrunner. I, you know, I think he and I sat for a second, and, and it was sort of touching. It was sort of like, you know, the end of a Mickey Rooney, Judy Garland, you know, movie when, you know, the way everybody agreed to do that and everybody cared about continuing. And that's what we had to take the temperature of, how much people wanted the experience to continue. And then when we got the extra two years, it would have been so silly to use those years to repeat an experience we've had, but to use those two years is holy mackerel, man! We got it. We're on. We're on. We're on a network. We have a television show. Let's let's fool. Or, let's just do different stuff. And that's this was part of that. This was part of that intent. How long will the Simpsons live on? Uh, it's you know everybody asks that question, and there's no there's really no answer to it except right now we wanted to. I mean right now we wanted to. And right now, it's it's great, and and uh, and we do have new experiences. We, you know, we have the, the, you know the show we're working on right now is some is is in a dramatic way something we've never done before, and 
and um, and we've we've done some we've fallen around. Twenty seven Emmys, a Peabody, all these things. Now to have an Oscar nomination added to the list. Maggie, <laughs> man, Maggie, <laughs> Maggie. You know, and 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 that was sort of the simplest way to do the short with her. It was a, it was simple. Allowed us to do it very quickly. Uh, um, the idea of of, uh, of nobody speaking just you know. Uh, uh, tested us in, in in a new way, but a way we're not totally unfamiliar with, and and it, and we just have had so much fun with the nomination. We have, you know, we 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 do these ads, and we and sometimes we just do it internally, like <laughs> you know, we have a couple of pieces of material that circulate internal that broke us all up, and it's and it's um, and it's with Maggie suddenly being in the Oscar race. <laughs> so uh, it really is, uh, I guess. Uh, a new thing, which there, you know, for for you guys to to be a part of this, is it uh, when you heard the news that you'd, you know, that that, that the short had been nominated for, for the best animated short Oscar, w is it something like I would imagine after you know with so many Emmys, that's it's not that it's not exciting, but it probably kind of is old hat at this point. But for an Oscar nomination, is that you? And again, you, I know you've got a, a plenty, a whole collection nothing, of Oscars too, but nothing, <laughs> nothing is. Not, I mean, that's you know, nothing is old hat. I, you know, this is this has always been our right. point of pride. You come on, let's say you come from Mars, you come on the Fox lot where they're doing a lot of television right. shows and a lot of movies. You walk into our writers' room and you say, "This is a first-year show because of the way people are working right. and they're pitching and you know what jokes are thrown out and what jokes aren't." And that's always been our point of pride that we, you know, you know, you don't appreciate things in retrospect. If you're very lucky, you appreciate them as they're happening to you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's true here. So finally, I just have to ask you. Um, if you could step back for a moment from this 26 uh, years of being associated with The Simpsons and driving it and all that, and, <laughs> and ask, you know, and, and look at it almost analytically, what is it that is responsible for the enduring, deep affection that people have for this uh, franchise? It's, I think, you know, th th there's this term when something doesn't work that you say it's, um, you know, a car wreck. And, but I think that things that work, you know, any, anything that's this much a team effort, which movies and television are, you know, when it works or doesn't work, part of it is an accident. And, you, <laughs> and that's how, that's what you, you call this? Well, it's just the accident of certain people getting together, mm -hmm. an accident of timing, an accident, yeah. Yeah, it's all these things that, you know, I, you know, I guess there are some you know, geniuses who, who, you know, I guess it's never an accident when James Cameron does it, I guess, but, but it sure was an accident for us. Well, thank you for a lot of uh, hundreds of hours of uh, a lot of fun and, and congratulations on the Thanks Oscar a lot, Scott. Really thank, you. It. thank you. Thank you.